there are a lot more scholarships than people realize. Like, when you go to school, they're like, oh, you can do this academic one, this academic one, this academic one. But just like going on Google and searching up scholarships that you can apply to, there are so many different opportunities. Juggling classes, making friends, studying tips, saving money. We're talking about all things college and giving you advice with real college students. Featuring today's hosts, Gabriel Kelso and Shalom Adkins. Welcome to the Campus Underground Podcast by Sally. Sit back, relax, and learn new hacks. Hey guys, welcome to Campus Underground Podcast, the podcast all about educational tips, tricks, and college advice. Today, I'm joined with my co-host Gabe, as well as Gavin, Chenna, and Laura Kate. All right, guys, let's talk a little bit about ourselves. Do you have any fun facts or just something you want to share, just so we all get well acquainted? Uh, as mentioned, I'm Gabe, and I'm going to design school in Virginia. My name is Gavin. I go to school in Boston, and I like making videos. Hey, I'm Chenna, and I'm a recent paralegal graduate and a poet. Hi, I'm Laura Kate. I go to school in the Boston area, and I'm in the Air National Guard. Cool. All right, so I have some icebreakers for us. Would you guys rather invest time in writing scholarship essays for a better chance to win or enter a no essay sweepstakes scholarship? I feel like I would go with the essay option. I feel like I'm a good storyteller and I could probably have a better chance with that. I definitely agree. Being that I'm a writer, I think I, my chances would be a lot stronger if I wrote something from the heart. Definitely. I also agree. I love writing. So I feel like having that confidence that I worked to get it, I'd feel like more deserving if I did. Absolutely. And I, I think that essay scholarships definitely have higher probabilities of that student winning mm -hmm. versus the no sweepstakes. It's all for one. What about you, Gabe? Uh, I think I'm going to be the dissenting opinion here. I don't necessarily enjoy writing a lot and I don't think I'm a great writer. So I think I might just kind of have a shotgun spread, apply to a bunch of stuff all over the place because writing isn't really like my thing. Absolutely. Next question would be, would you rather um, have scholarship interviews or just submit essays? So like, would you rather sit down and interview someone, talk with them, never have to write a paper or write an essay and never have to sit down with someone? Um, this one, I would definitely prefer an interview. Like I said, I am not a great writer. And I feel like if I write an essay, there's more of a chance that I'm going to think of something that I wish I mentioned but didn't, then if I'm doing an interview, I can like come up with stuff on the spot and kind of tailor it more specifically to me and what the person that's interviewing me is looking for. I'd say I'd go with the essay option. I feel like you would have like more time just trying to perfect it than like missing out something that you could have said in an interview. That's a tough one because even though I'm a writer and I have confidence in my writing skills, sometimes you want to be able to verbalize what you're thinking and how you want to answer your questions. So and that face to face sometimes goes a long way. So I'm a little torn. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's totally cool. I would definitely write the essay. I get I'm first of all very bad at first impressions. They were very good today. So but um, writing the essay, I can read it over and make sure that I got everything that I wanted in there. Um, but when it's face to face, I I feel like I'm not myself until I'm comfortable. So I'll just overthink it. Absolutely. And I love that. Like, that's why we have options, you know, because mm -hmm. not everyone's personality is like, I'll write a paper versus some people are like, I will write the paper. So it's so cool that like we always have those options. Next question is, would you rather study a high demand field or a lesser known topic? That's tricky. I think personally, I love niche stuff. Like I'm obsessed with having a lot of expertise in a really niche thing, but I think it would have to be something that I feel really, really strongly about since there is, in theory, less of a chance of landing a career after college. So I think if I did choose the lesser known topic, it would have to be a topic that I'm really, really passionate about. Yeah, I feel like it definitely depends on like what you're interested in and like what you really want to study, what you're passionate about. For me, I think I'm in a higher demand field, so I'd probably go with that option. Yeah, I probably agree with the first two answers. It's kind of like passion versus practicality. Which way do you go? It's not necessarily taking the easy road, but you want to go with something that is more broadly recognized, probably. I would have the same answer, too. And I feel like I learn more from other people and making connections with people. So having a larger field, there's more people to communicate with and learn more about their perspectives on it. So I would probably do better in a bigger field. 
my next question I have for you guys is, would you rather stick with a major that you hate or transfer the first chance that you get? Uh, I'm going to transfer the first chance I get. <laughs> I couldn't. The main thing for me is I don't think I could ever stick to a major that I can't stand because then I might end up in a career that I can't stand and that's just not the direction I really want to go. I agree. I would say definitely transfer that major if yeah. you like hate it. If it's talking about school, I feel like there's another like variable in there that like you can think about cuz sometimes a school really gives you like a different opportunity based on like the environment. Yeah, never stick with something that makes you miserable. It's going to make your life miserable and you would never give it your all if you're not happy. So whether it's the school or it's the major, make that change as soon as possible before it's too late. Yeah. I would also say make that change. I personally changed my major like twice in my first semester of college. Um, you just want to make sure you're doing something you're comfortable with. That's the only way you give it at all. Yeah. And that, that's such an awesome thing that like schools have to. It's like you don't have to stay in your major. Mm -hmm. You can change. And if the school doesn't have it, maybe it's time to change the school. It's also a lot of pressure to like pick what you're going to do for the next four years right out of high school. So Absolutely. just being able to feel it all out. Yeah, that's that's the beauty of college. You have so much time to decide. Yeah. You know, there's no rush really. And like, you have to know right now. <laughs> um, would you guys rather do extracurriculars for fun or do extracurriculars for a higher chance of getting scholarships? This kind of goes along with what I said earlier, I guess, about like having my passions in my free time. I guess I wouldn't want to feel that pressure for the extracurricular. Like I'm performing this and I have to perform well for a like chance at our scholarship i think if i had to choose scholarships are really really helpful but if i had the opportunity to not have to compete in my extracurriculars for one i'd probably choose that yeah i'm a big advocate for having fun and like doing things to enjoy things like at the core i feel like when you do things for fun and you really enjoy something then like success will follow along with it Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. If your extracurriculars are something that you're passionate about, then it's a win-win. So I say pick things that you're passionate about, but can still lead you into the direction that you're trying to go to at the same time. Absolutely. I say do it for fun. I feel like if I was doing something that I enjoy, but I knew that I had to do it, I would want to do it less. I would dread it a little bit. <laughs> when yeah. someone tells me to do something, I don't want to do it. Totally. And, and the cool thing is when you do things you're passionate about, you do things that are fun, you know, as an extracurricular, it could turn into something amazing. It could turn into a scholarship. It could turn into so many new opportunities because you're pursuing your passion. And when you do that, you excel in it. My last question, uh, actually, my second to last question I have for you guys is, would you rather apply for scholarships based solely on academics or for your hobbies? Um... Not to be that guy, I don't know if my academics, they're not bad, <laughs> but I don't know if they're quite enough to carry me through the scholarship applying process. And like I said, my grades are fine, for the record, but I don't think that my academics is really something that I pride myself in as much as some of like my own personal achievements are. So if I had to choose, I think I have more confidence in my own like personal achievements and my own personal pursuits than I do in like my academic numbers. Yeah. I never actually went on my way to look for scholarships based on like hobbies. So if I had to restart, that's something I would definitely do. I've like applied for academic ones in the past, but given I had like more opportunities for hobbies and like seeing what's out there, I'd definitely choose that one. Especially for films, because I know a lot, like a few research, there's so many different film schools and film scholarships out there, Yeah. Um, but as well as academics. How about you? Yeah, um, with acad I've done both. And with academics, the parameters are 3.5 GPA or better. I mean, how many other students are going to have that, you know? So the competition would be pretty stiff. Um, whereas if you go to your hobby, it's sort of like that niche thing that we were talking about earlier where you can really hone in and, and talk about the things that you're passionate about and hopefully go for it within that specific category. That's sort of what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. um, academics don't define a person, although some people are very proud of their academics and they put a lot of effort into that and that doesn't, that's not overseen. But I feel like if I was looking through submissions for a scholarship, I would see all the grades and be like, okay, now what else? Like, what do you have that maybe some, what, like how do you stand out? Mm -hmm. 
And so I feel like hobbies are the way to go. And I would say, like, don't just limit yourself to hobbies and academics Mm -hmm. only because there's so much stuff out there. I mean, you can find academics based on, like, the profession your parents are in. Like, there's scholarships for that. Who knew? You know, so there's so much if you just spend a little bit of time researching. Um, I really like the point that Laura Kate made. Like, there's any number of people who have the same numbers academically that you do, but that can't really show who you are as a person and, like, your interests and kind of like your achievements and your strengths and your weaknesses. So I think other scholarships that aren't solely academic can kind of be more personal and kind of more tailored to what you're good at. And a lot of times scholarships are looking for like a well-rounded individual. So like maybe you don't have a 3.5, maybe you have a 3.0, but you're an amazing writer or you're an amazing artist. Like they'll look at that even when it's just academics. They'll look Mm -hmm. at all of it and be like, oh, well, yes, they have a 3.0, but they're so talented in this. I want to, you know, give them a $10,000 scholarship because I believe that they're going to excel not only in their academics, but also in their art. So my last question I have for you guys is, would you rather spend time searching for niche scholarships or just apply to the popular ones? I'm a niche guy. I like niche stuff. I think that I I don't do well with competition. I stress out a lot when I'm applying to things. I know a lot of people else are because I'm like, am I good enough? So just like personally for me, I think it's a lot less stressful. And I think there's a lot more that can be like more tailored to my strength. I feel like a mix of both is good. Like yeah. apply to both and see where it gets you you know like you never know um chances come and go and the best way to go about it is just to put yourself out there well said yeah um it's it's kind of scary throwing your hat in the ring when you know you're going up against so many others that competition aspect can be a little nerve-wracking so if you stick with something that you know you you might feel a little more comfortable or even maybe give it that extra oomph at the end but yeah I kind of agree with both of you to to try both but also that comfortability and in, in being within your niche and if you see something that's niche and you're like wow that really applies to me obviously you're going to be more confident in that space so yeah no I definitely think niche is awesome for me personally I got most of my scholarships based off niche or like mm-hmm. first gen um the popular ones are awesome but it's harder to get you know so it's like really spend the time And you'll be surprised how many people want to give you award money for a niche or sponsor you for something. With that being said, let's dive a little bit deeper into talking about grants and scholarships and awards. Do you guys have any like personal experiences with like applying for scholarships or like the struggle you went through looking for them? I didn't apply to very many scholarships. Personally, for me, I lived in a very academically competitive area so I had a hard time competing for other academic scholarships and the scholarships that weren't necessarily uh, merit-based at least in my area and the ones that I were was able to find didn't really tailor very well to me like I remember I had a meeting with like my academic advisor and they were showing me all these scholarships and some of them were incredibly specific and i remember there was one that they were trying to get me to apply to that was like you can apply to this one if your parents work at the airport and they're like do your parents work at the airport and i was like no no they don't they were like you sure your parents don't work at the airport and i was like yeah i think i think i know my parents don't work at the airport so it, it was a little bit tough for me because there weren't as many like opportunities to find all the scholarships that I would hope that I would be able to apply to. For me, every year I do apply to a scholarship that the company that my dad works at holds. Shout out dad out there. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's like merit based. It really, they really like question you about your previous academic years. So every year you got to like renew it. It just like kind of gets you in that mode where you have to like push yourself each year and it's just not like granted or guaranteed. How about you? Um, if we're talking about challenges with scholarships, I would say the only challenges I really had was my first year was not trying at all. Oh no. <laughs> um, I kind of just didn't know what to do and didn't educate myself, didn't ask questions. I would see and hear about scholarships, but wasn't sure if I should or, and I just sort of the first 
semester just didn't try at all. So I obviously don't recommend that. Um, and so don't get in your own way and just go for it and, and try for the ones that you think you can and even the ones that you think you can't. Absolutely. Talking to an advisor obviously is super important. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely press like college counselors, advisors, because they are a wealth of information. And who knows what kind of, you know, scholarships or grants or even loans that they can offer you. Mm -hmm. That'll really change like not only your financial future, but your educational experience and how much you actually enjoy college. Because it's like if you're stressing about your bills and you're stressing about all this, when it's like, hey, I didn't know there's something out there that will cover that or, you know, reduce that expense. So definitely press it into the help that colleges offer. How about you, Laura Kate? Um, I'm going to make you feel a bit better. Okay. I have the same personality. So um, specifically going into college from high school, obviously it's very overwhelming. Um, there, I feel like nobody really – like carved that path for me so I didn't really know what to do it's kind of that transition into adulting so I was like I don't do I google it like I don't really know so I just kind of pretended like it wasn't there which is what I do when things are overwhelming but I did join the air guard so they have the tuition and fees waiver so I did it's really, cool they covered that so so with yeah. that did they do they pay for like your tuition fees every semester is that something you yes. have to reapply to like there's Gavin a certain said. amount of credits but you get your four years Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That is so cool. I had no idea. Um, but yeah, it's definitely like, you know, spending the time and really getting the knowledge. I think an awesome resource is YouTube, like looking yes. at podcasts, yes. you know, typing in whatever topic or whatever you're struggling with as like a first gen or first semester or freshman college student, like believe it or not, YouTube has so many answers for us, you know, when you just like type in what's this or what's that? And it's like, it's pretty much like a classroom inside your bedroom. I definitely feel like I should have done more research too. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. she's right. Sometimes it does feel like, not that everyone has to hold your hand, right. but if you don't know, then you just don't know. Right. And then you might be getting bombarded with like emails and posters mm -hmm. and, and all these announcements, scholarship this and scholarship that. And you just, if you don't get it, you might just say, I, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I can definitely relate. I think that there are a lot more scholarships than people realize. Like when you go to school, they're like, oh, you can do this academic one, this academic one, this academic one. But just like going on Google and searching up scholarships that you can apply to, there are so many different opportunities. Like my parents didn't work at the airport, but the fact that there even is a scholarship <laughs> for that, I'm sure that's like, that's really awesome for a lot of people. So I think people need to expand their horizons and look under every rock, look near and far for all their scholarship opportunities because there's a lot more than you would realize. Absolutely, kind of like how you were saying your dad's like job yeah. offers. Like the airport one is really niche, so I mm -hmm. feel like there's like way that's super more, specific. Uh -huh. Yeah, way never more heard of that out now. there like that. Yeah, yeah, no, I've heard of like a couple different ones that are revolved around like parents' jobs. Like for me personally, one of the scholarships I got was through my dad's job. They have scholarships for if you're like a union member or even non-union members. Like your children and your grandchildren can go just like college completely paid for so wow. like who knew that was out there you just ask your parents obviously but also like do some research i mean if you type it in on google but also talk to your counselors there are thousands and thousands of different like awards grants scholarships for like tons of niches but also like academics as well and then also like sports um talents like really random ones i've seen ones for like oh like can you sing or like are you a clay maker you know like and it's like here's five thousand dollars to towards your educational journey i think that like i was saying i think the mistake i made was i didn't look enough so i didn't realize how many opportunities i had but i think even schools, they kind of, like I said, they promote these same kind of ones over and over. And what that does is it creates like kind of an environment around applying for scholarships where it becomes really a really big competition. Whereas if they promoted the um, kind of breadth of the all the different kinds of scholarships you could apply to, I think it would have it would take a lot of the stress away. And I remember I had one friend when they went to their academic uh, advisor, they're a dual citizen because their dad is from the UK and they saw that and they said, you know, there's this scholarship for um, people with uh, where their fathers aren't really like active right. in their lives. And they were like, well, I see here that your dad's from the UK. Does that apply to him? And they're like, no, he's, he, I, I know my dad, he's active in my life. He's <laughs> just from the UK. And they were like, no, no, your dad is not active in your life. And you should apply to this scholarship. And it's like, he's not a deadbeat. He's yeah. just British. 
<laughs> like we, oh, no. <laughs> I don't think that there should be the kind of culture around that where people feel like they need to lie about things like that yeah. to be able to get scholarships. I'm sure there are dual citizenship scholarship. If you look at the bigger picture, there's a lot that you can apply to. Absolutely. And I feel like that's really good that you brought that up because as awesome as like, you know, all of the college counselors and the academic advisors are sometimes, depending on who you go to, they can be a little pushy, you know, so it's like, take their advice, but also, you know, follow your own truth and really make sure what you're applying to and what you're doing resonates well with you. And it's not just someone else's advice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, well, this advice makes sense. And it applies with my goals or aligns with my lifestyle. With that being said, I want to get a little bit into bad and good advice. I feel like you brought up a great um, example, but do you guys like what kind of advice have you gotten from like it could be counselors, it could be friends that you're like, oh, that really helped you in college, and then some of it's like, I wish I never took their advice. <laughs> For me personally, I would say a major tip that helped me to get scholarships and really get my whole educational journey paid for was not only sitting down and spending time, but really talking to people. Like I remember when I was in high school, that's when I was like, I do not want to have to you know, pay for college. I don't want to be one of the millions of students that have college debt. So what I did in high school in my first year of college is I spoke to everyone that I could. I just talked to everyone. I'm like, hey, like, do you know any scholarships or do you have any advice for like getting, you know, college paid for or any like cool grants or awards that you've heard of, like through word of mouth and that made such a difference. I mean, the amount of knowledge that like older people have, that college advisors and guidance have, like I would not stress enough talking, talking to everyone, even if you're shy, like speak up and ask because it'll change like your financial future. Like right now, I don't have any college debt because I wasn't scared to like, you know, speak up and be like, hey, can you give me advice for like scholarships or even essays, you know, spend time like talking to people with um, that have walked it before you or even grandparents, you know, you never know. Yeah, I think the one thing that I would say is like, just go for it. Like, don't be afraid to apply to things and not get it. Just do, I don't know if I'd say apply to every scholarship you can, although I think I actually would say that. Don't like apply with reckless abandon, but make sure you're putting yourself out there in as many ways as you can, because it really can't hurt you. Like, not getting a scholarship can't hurt you, but getting one can really help you a lot. So yeah. the one thing I'd say is just go out there and go for it. Absolutely. Even if you don't think you qualify for it, still apply because you never know it'll happen. How about you, Gavin? Back to like what you were saying about your story, I feel like the first step is always the hardest, right? Once you get past Absolutely. that first step, it gets a lot easier. Um, so yeah, just put yourself out there, take that first step, take that chance, and then there'll be a lot of benefits that come along with it. I feel like for me, a lot of stuff was like proposed to me. Like for example, the scholarship that I applied to, that was like proposed to me. I, I wish I could have done more by like taking action myself if I had another chance. I didn't really have too much knowledge about how many scholarships were out there. If I could go back, I would definitely take more action and just put myself out there instead of just like waiting for things to come to me. Absolutely. Like, and I'm, I'm really glad you said that because a good reminder, and I feel like a lot of students forget, is like, it's never too late. Like, you can be in your third year of college and you can still qualify for scholarships. That's true, they have yeah. like yeah. senior ones, you know, like it's never too late. You know, you, just because you didn't do it freshman year or sophomore year doesn't mean you can't do it junior and senior year because they're out there. Like I said, I'm being completely honest. The first year, I didn't apply for anything only because I didn't know any better. And then once I knew better, I still was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do this. I don't even know how to get started. And then you have some scholarship warriors, like those students that know every scholarship and apply for everything, and that's all they do. So you got to kind of look at it almost as um, when you're looking for a job. For those of you who have already started job hunting, looking for a job is a job within itself. And yeah. so looking for scholarships can be sort of like a job as well. You do have to set aside some time for it, and you do have to work 
for it. It's not going to just fall into your lap. So um, don't be like me. You know, look f look for these scholarships, research, ask questions, be more like Shalom, ask questions, <laughs> talk to people. Um, and yes, it will be a little overwhelming, especially once you start diving into the world of scholarships. Now you're like, first, I didn't know anything. And now I know too much. It's too much. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, dive into it and, and do the work. You know, it's, it's not going to come easy, but the reward will be you know, rewarding in the end. Absolutely. I love how you brought up, look at it like a job. And in the exactly. end, you'll get the reward or the payout like a job. Um, I think ask questions. Ask those scholarship warriors. There's people that know a lot about it that you don't. Mm -hmm. Everyone starts off not knowing anything about it. It's just knowing your resources and making those connections and talking to people. And don't be afraid to annoy people because people love to talk about themselves. <laughs> they love to give you advice. They love to talk about things that they are confident in and know about. Um, so just ask those questions. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's really good. The worst thing you can do is not not get a scholarship. It's to not apply to a scholarship. So Absolutely. even if you think you won't get it, just go for it. Why yeah. not? You'll, you, you'll be surprised. Like just putting yourself out there, what'll fall into your lap. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to ask you guys if you have any like can't live without advice for fellow college students out there. I will go first. I'll say for me, something that I can't live without is like video. So like researching, you know, different web platforms that offer like a visualization of what it is you're questioning. Because for me, I'm a visual learner. So if I can watch like a video about like scholarships or a video about like this degree or this major or whatever it is, like definitely something I could not live without the three years that I've been in school is like the internet, but also like just, you know, watching stuff because learning through visualizing is so easy and it's awesome. How about you, Gabe? Um, I think the one thing that's most that was like most important to my college journey is like just try not to this is gonna sound incredibly simple and obvious, but try not to stress too much. Like it's very stressful, like you don't know what's gonna happen, you don't know what your path is yet, but if I had to say one thing, no matter how cliche it would be, is everything is going to work out. Like, yeah. don't stress about the big picture, like, what am I going to do? Like, what is my path going to be? You're going to find your path eventually. Like, even with scholarships, you're going to find what you can apply to eventually. You're going to find your group of friends. I think I'd just say, at least don't stress yourself with, like, knowing exactly what you're going to do right away. I agree with his point. I agree with your point too. I feel like there's so many like short form content nowadays mm -hmm. that like even if you're not specifically looking for it, you'll like come across it and it's just like so easy to digest. I feel like there's great advice out there. There's so many people who like make videos trying to explain things. I would say take advantage of the resources out there. So yeah. I guess the only thing I could really add to it is don't take it personal if you don't get a scholarship that you apply to. Yeah. I know my feelings have been hurt a little bit. Like oh, no. I wrote a killer essay, <laughs> like why? But yeah. no, don't don't take it personal. Obviously there's a lot of competition out there, but every time you apply, you're just giving yourself that much more experience for the next one. Absolutely. So keep going. That is such a good mindset to keep. How about you, Laura Kate? I also agree not to stress. My biggest stressor in life is change. Humans are not acclimated to change naturally. The feeling that when you're nervous, it's the same feeling of excitement I learned. So I kind of gaslight myself mm. into being excited. So whenever I get nervous about change, you just got to lean into it and you just got to do the best you can. And like you said, it's just going to work out. It's all going to work out in the end. Absolutely. And I would say don't stress. Again, if you don't get a scholarship, it's OK. You can still mm -hmm. go to school. Yep. There's still so much stuff out there. Um, and with that, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for your wealth of knowledge and experience regarding scholarships and all things education. Thank you, Gabe, for co-hosting with me. And thank you to those watching. I hope you guys learn more about scholarships and feel inspired to go out there and get some scholarships for your college education. Mm -hmm.